welcome to Pumpkin Spice Podcast. It's a pre-spice episode because this is for our donors and the bonus feed. I'm Rob Schulte. I'm Brittany. Hi. And we're back at it again. I think uh, I think people really enjoyed the last public episode as well as the last private episode or donors episode. Gosh, I hope you- so. <laughs> what did you think, though, Brittany? I enjoyed it thoroughly, personally. Is this a trick question? Because I, I'm just like shamelessly like, I love it. No, no, no. This isn't like a saw thing where you're going to have to justify <laughs> something. But today's bonus episode is disgusting. <laughs> it's so true, though. Yeah, I mean, it's so weird because it's like I'll watch a slasher and be just fine and not at all think disgusting. I'll think gross or you know, be like, whoa, that's really graphic, but I won't think disgusting. That's the general vibe I felt. It was just, kind of, it wasn't like scary in the sa- same way of like getting murdered, even though people do get murdered. But it was more like a bathtub full of roaches makes me sick to my stomach. Yeah. It's it, disgusting. It, also, dude, just clean your house, man. <laughs> he, I mean, it felt like he had the roaches before anything actually He happened. did. How do we know that he didn't start this? Like, he was just, like, super messy house. And, like, are we getting into it? Like, are we ready? Like, I just have things to say. Well, before we jump straight into the, into the episode itself, do you have any personal roach stories? How, do I? I'm a buddy. person. Yeah, buddy. In the, I, I'm a person in the world, so, of course, I have had roach experiences. I... Don't think of them fondly, but the last time I had a roach in my house, it it was a couple months ago. There's like a back patio and one of them had gotten in, you know, and it was a big one. And I walked into my kitchen and I shrieked and I shrieked and I like I just kept screaming and screaming and screaming. And I was like backing out of the room, like throwing furniture, <laughs> you know, did, like. did you end the roach? Well, no, 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 no. I don't, I, I, like, my boyfriend came and killed it, but um, he told me after he killed it, he was like, you know, like, I don't like roaches either, by the way, just so you know, I, do, I also don't like roaches. You so need you to put text. me in a position, yeah. okay. <laughs> he's like, no, but he's like, the one thing you can do for me is text the downstairs neighbors and just let them know what's going on. Actually, they were like, we didn't hear a thing, and I was like, well, that's a problem for if anything actually happens up here that I need attention. Yeah, that's that's a a lot like an experience I had. I was mere months living in New York, and I I was surprised at how I had seen relatively few bugs, given what I've been told. And I just woke up, and there was one in the bed. No! Yeah, only one, and it was gigantic, and I just swatted it and killed it and immediately like sent an email to my landlord because I was just like, I don't, I don't know what else to say, but this doozy of a roach was in our room, so uh, should we burn the brownstone to the <laughs> exactly. ground, or uh, what are we going to do about this? Yeah. Definitely uh, a fluke incident just happened to be right when I moved in. Everyone should know, obviously, we're talking about the nest from 1988. Obviously. Obviously. Uh, This one was suggested by our buddy Felipe, so thank you, sir. This movie was a lot of fun to watch and not too difficult to find if you know how to type in the title of the movie and the year. Which I had Uh, trouble with, but Rob helped me. (laughs) <laughs> um, the Nest was directed by Terrence Winkless. Looks like Terrence has done a lot of television. Oh, like, wow. That's kind of cool. That's a pretty big deal. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the TV series. Mm-hmm. Um, Ranger Zio. So he's done a lot of like television. And that's pretty cool. All you can ask, you know, consistent, consistent gigs, right? Yes. Um, but other than that, I don't know any of these actors. I know that uh, the mayor of the town... Was played by well, that character's name was Elias Johnson. It was played by Robert Lansing, and he's like, I think he's like a Bonanza and Star Trek. Oh yeah, television Bonanza. actor. Yeah, you know, like way back. But I don't really know any of these other names. Anyone jump out to you? Not at all. Well, let's see what jumps out in terms of the IMDb storyline. Hmm. Do you want me to read it, or would oh, you yeah. like to read it? Oh, okay. I would love to hear you read it. 
The Nest, 1988. Horrifying shocker as a biological experiment goes haywire when meat-eating mutant roaches invade an island community, terrorizing a peaceful New England fishing village and hideously butchering its citizens. Written by Concord Dash New Horizons Parentheses With Permission Jake! We gotta talk. Uh, yeah. This the turns this movie takes and then just like leaves lying in the dust without ever deciding if they need to go back to it or not. Yeah. <laughs> just leaving the door open a crack, but Yeah. You know, you know they're not gonna go back in. It's like the option is there. But maybe we should really just start getting into it. Uh, was there any scenes that really... I guess, like, let's not even go specifically into scenes. Like, what is your lasting impression? What are some of the things that really jumped out at you in this movie? From the very, very beginning, and this is just, like, context, I didn't ever make it full screen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, I can't handle all of these cockroaches. When the lady sees the roach in the bed, you know, the lady with the cast? Uh-huh. And she's like, uh, as if it's just like an inconvenience and she's kind of like just casual about it. I don't know. Yeah. It's like, well, that's not the appropriate reaction. And granted, by the end of the scene, she's covered in cockroaches and cockroaches are like falling out of her mouth as she's screaming, screaming you know? <laughs> yeah. But then the very next scene, I think, is like, I don't know who it was. There was like a man in a truck and he was you know, driving down a highway and there was like a roach on his hand or his neck or something. And he looks down and he sees it and he screams and he drives off the bridge and his car explodes. And I was like, I was like, that's the appropriate reaction. That's what I've been looking for <laughs> this whole time. Everybody is very cash about roaches. It's like it's, they've chosen the filth they want to live in. But like, exactly. ew. What about you? Yeah, those are definitely, I want to just, before I, I say the one that really jumps out at me, I really want to talk about the, that old lady scene where the roaches in the bed was like one of the most disgusting parts of the movie. Like, uh, the younger daughter or whoever that was like bringing her food up, but like and spilt it on the floor. And she drops it on the, on the <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, she drops it on the ground and then just puts it back and is like talking to herself. Oh, it'll be okay. And then she's, like, giving it to her f mother, I guess, in bed. And, like, it, the camera pans down her leg. And there's, like, this liquid down to the ground. What and was that? Like, I think it was supposed to be uh, maple syrup because uh. it, like, attracted the roaches. Which doesn't make sense because they've got, like, super senses and are going against human smells and stuff now. Yeah, they're not going to Waffle House. They're going yeah. to people. It really didn't make sense that they needed a trail to get to that room. And it also just made it look like... She was peeping that, in herself? Yeah, that's gross. <laughs> oh, you know what? Speaking of, like, the, the people having roaches in their mouth... That was the very first thing is the guy drinks the coffee and he spits yeah. out a roach and he's like, Ugh! and then they show him walking into the diner in the next scene and he kisses the waitress. Oh, and like, yeah. You just had a roach in your mouth. How dare you? So, uh, yeah, first off, something's up that this dude found a roach on his hand and in his coffee. <laughs> and his, the next thing he did was not call the exterminator. I was going to say not burn his house down, but yes, I'm with you. Yes, absolutely. He decides he's going to go to the diner to get his coffee or whatever <laughs> and then like make comment about it because, of course, the town exterminator is probably going to be nearby. Right. Um, okay, and I'm glad you brought that up because that is my scene that I really like stuck with. He goes into like flirt with the woman who works at the diner and then she's like i got something for you and gives him sunglasses and everyone kind of looks at each other who's eating in the diner's like oh look at that he's got some sunglasses and then as he leaves he like shakes them up and down as if to be like look at me i'm mr sunglasses and everyone kind of chuckles to themselves and he leaves why? And Why? What was that? <laughs> I don't 
know, because I was like, well, it's eye protection. It's very important if you want to maintain your eyesight through, sure. through your later life. You're one mean piece of law enforcement, Sheriff. You bet I am. But, you know, maybe it's like it's a small town. And back then, maybe they felt like if you wear sunglasses, you, you think you're a movie star. No, oh, yeah, that's probably I don't, I mean, what it I, is. I'm just trying to make sense of it, man. Like, I don't understand. I mean, any answer is better than people just laughing at someone <laughs> for owning sunglasses. Well, what at what point in history do you think it was socially acceptable for just everyone to wear sunglasses? Because don't you think that small towns would be like, what do you think you are, James Dean? You know, it's got to be the time when, like, people stopped wearing hats everywhere like fancy yeah. hats <laughs> just in general whenever we would see roaches after the like death or like scary anticipation thing happened it just felt gross like not scary it's like they were trying to scare us with a pile of roaches after a dead body's just like laying on the ground and i was just like that's gross I also don't understand how they know where this, like, secret exit to a cave is every I, time they go there. I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, anytime I'm in any kind of compromising position, which is apparently never, like, when have I ever f actually feared for my life? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You don't know where the nearest exit is. Especially you know? when you're underground. Right. Can we just get it out there? It feels like arachnophobia stole a lot of ideas from this and then had the budget to make it a little bit better. Did you ever see that? Of course I have, but you know, it's also because spiders are scarier. Like, aren't spiders scarier? Roaches are yeah. gross, spiders yeah. are scary. Like, no one's like really, af okay, I, I mean, I was gonna say no one's afraid of roaches, but people are legitimately afraid of roaches. <laughs> it's so true. I met a lady the other day that was afraid of a, of a moth. And she like locked herself in the bathroom and was like, I'm not coming out until somebody gets rid of the moth. So there's gotta be somebody afraid of cockroaches on the level that we're talking about. Mayor Johnson. Oh no, please just call me Elias. We're not very formal here on the island. Why did the mayor dad sacrifice himself? I, I don't know, but you know, it's, <laughs> It's possibly because he knew, like, what a garbage person he had been. Like, he kind of, you know, when a captain goes down with the ship. Sure, but they didn't have to go in the bedroom, but there happened to be a bunch of roaches in the bedroom. So walk me through this scene, if you would. Just help me. Help me. They're trying to <laughs> shut me. the door. <laughs> yeah. They're trying to shut the door, but the rug keeps getting in the way. Yes. And they're like, Dad, no, Dad, you got to keep moving. We got to do this. And... Instead of them just being like, you know what? We could just run and be very far ahead of them. Yeah. The dad goes, save yourself and just dives into the bedroom so that the roaches eat him. You know, it's super sad that her, you know, dad uh, sacrificed himself, right? But instead of her being like, well, this will give me a head start because they're going to feast on my father and then I need to like, you know, get, you get a head start, right? Yeah. Instead of that, I thought she was going to leave the house, but instead she went upstairs into a bedroom and locked herself into a closet, which I feel like they've shown us over and over and over that roaches can get to you in that capacity. You know what I mean? They show her later. They come back to her and she's like curled up in the closet. She looks like really distressed and distraught. And there's like towels shoved under the closet door, like to keep roaches from coming in. And I was like, that's me after seeing one cockroach. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, th now somebody has a real reaction. Hey, Brittany, what did you think about him like just totally ghosting the woman that works at the diner? And by him, I mean Richard, the police officer. I was, well, when at the end, like they were kissing on the beach, him and the mayor's daughter, I yeah. was thinking like, do you not care about the fact that you're just former flame? I say like a day ago flame is dead now like is there no yeah. part of you that's like bummer you know no, nothing but also, i should have been a little bit more that? polite <laughs> yeah there should have been like they they could have poured one out for her but the scene where now the diner is in 
infested with roaches. Like there's not a surface that's not covered with roaches. And she just kind of like, do you want more coffee? Does there anybody refill on that coffee, sir? Pouring cups of coffee onto the counters and like smashing them with, it's like there's more roaches than you could possibly count. Like run, right? And they'll also kill you. Yes. Like, well, did she know that? Did she know that? Sure, but then, like, what's the what's the ro- roach logic in this movie? Is some characters can are not as tasty. I don't know. They're not questions that we necessarily need answers <laughs> to. I'm also thinking, like, I'm being really like down on this, but this was like really fun to watch. It was obviously not a very amazing movie but that's what is even better like the moments they try and interject a little bit of humor into it like that scene you're talking about or when homer the exterminator is on the side of the road and the cop pulls over and they like keep walking around opposite sides of the truck and they can't find each other like these moments of humor that fail miserably is what makes this movie so much fun to watch. Two thoughts on exterminator guy, Homer. Homer. One, we'll have to post a picture of this. I took a screen cap because it was so funny. He is dressed as Ace Ventura, but apparently, I mean, you know, (laughs) obviously Ace Ventura wasn't out at this time, but then I'm like, well, was Ace Ventura informed by this character? Because... It's like add a tutu and it's Ace Ventura. But then the other thing at the, like towards the end, he's like, I'm going to kill these bad bugs, you know? And you'll have to put in the quote that he actually says, because I'm not going to do it any justice, but he's like, I killed your father. I killed your grandfather. No, by God, I'm going to kill you. And he flicks his cigarette, and he accidentally <sighs> blows up his house. Our dream anytime we see one cockroach. Again, appropriate reaction to cockroaches. I love that he's just like haphazardly mixing chemicals mm-hmm. in his like kitchen. Also, that police officer isn't renting his house, right? He probably owns that, right? Well, who knows? Okay, so even if you are renting an entire house for yourself, dude, you gotta learn some, like, cleanliness. Right. <laughs> um, and I think this probably goes into our next section that is tentatively called Things That Made You Go, Hmm? Things That Made You Go, Hmm? Oh, yes. Let's dive in because this is a good one. Yeah, He's not taking care of himself. (laughs) Um, Where's the little self-care in your routine, sir? And we have multiple situations where we can, like, pull this from, okay? In the beginning, we can say, you know, the bug thing, maybe he's just busy. But... (laughs) You want to give him excuses. Yeah, but realistically, you see, you know, pests in your home. You need to be on the phone booking an appointment, especially if you drink it and then like don't brush your teeth. (laughs) And then you go kiss your girlfriend who you don't even react to when she dies. Yes. Two, when your old girlfriend that's now your new girlfriend is at your apartment and needs to borrow a shirt, you have to sniff (laughs) a shirt before... Like giving it to her, like your dirty clothes should be in the dirty clothes hamper area wherever you keep it. You shouldn't be mixing up anything. Yeah. The last and final thought on this is that his he has his mattress is on the floor. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I think the last time I had a mattress on the floor, I was twenty three, and that's still probably too old. No, 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 no. That's fine. That's fine. I'm sure that sends a signal. Like, if someone walks into your room for the first time, we're like, hey, yeah, welcome to my house. Oh, you want to, uh, it's getting late. You want to just crash here? And you walk in the room, and then there's a bed on the floor. That's like, that tells its own story. Well, especially because he's like 45, by the way. So what I guess what I'm trying to say is I think he's suffering from depression. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say that's the telltale signs of depression if I ever heard them, which I have. Yeah, did you have any things that made you go, hmm? Lots. When the mayor's daughter goes into the cave by herself to check out, I don't know, what's in the cave? Why was she in there? board game? Did they have a board game? Well, and that's the thing. She's like, sees this like Monopoly game under all this like dirt and stuff. And she goes over to it and picks it up and she like 
as she picks it up, tons of roaches scurry. And oh, it's yeah. like, she no reaction. didn't even, no, yeah, there was zero reaction. I'm like, not even like, Ooh, oh, 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 s- startled me, nothing. It also, I, d- I don't understand. What did Monopoly have to do with anything? Well, he wrote her an IOU or something. They never, I don't know, you couldn't really read the note very easily. I couldn't, at least. I didn't even know any of these people's names until Me? like halfway through the movie. <laughs> I know, the mayor, I was like calling him the mayor in my brain the whole time until it was like, Elias. I'm like, he doesn't look like an Elias this whole time. I guess I must have missed like one crucial scene where like <laughs> everyone's name and everyone's job was like laid out for us. no. Another thing that made me go, hmm. the mayor's daughter, I understand it's such a super bummer that your father is now per- in personally, like inside of his body is infested with roaches or roach eggs, right? Yeah. That's so sad. And I, I feel for her. But then she just stands there for like the 45 seconds while her dad's body is like exploding and his like eyeballs are bleeding and his feet are like blood. <laughs> I'm like, is it at any point? Do you want to just like run away? Also, did it, that seemed like a pretty quick turn to go from like, oh, they're like man eating roaches to also they become what they eat. A fancy way of being like, you are what you eat. You know, I'm like potato salad today, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, what is that? Like, so what it, they became her dad? Like that was actually just like roaches. That's like the equivalent of like two kids stacked on each other's shoulders. And, yeah. Like, carrying a, you know what I mean? I'm like, so wait, that was just roaches? But also they became that cat at that one point, which oh. I think was probably the scariest scene in the well, whole movie. I was going to say most disturbing. Well, yeah. I mean, first of all, if you get me stuck in a room with a regular cat that's scared and jumping around with claws, I'm going to be scared to death. Yes. Make it like a roach cat death hybrid i think we can all agree or maybe it's just me and every other animal lover but i can watch you like peel back the skin on a human like all day no just kidding i hate that but (laughs) i can handle it more than if like it's like leave the animals out of this like i can watch a horror movie scary you're not frightening yeah you're just being like gross and rude although i do think when the the roaches are the dad, the mayor, um, uh-huh. <laughs> that's got to be where they got the idea for like Vincent D'Onofrio's character in Men in Black. Oh, I was gonna say the Oogie Boogie Man, but <laughs> give me sugar. You're joking. Question. Answer. Maybe. How many roaches do you think were harmed in the making of this film? Oh, it had to be a bunch, right? Where did they get them all? Harmed or liberated. (laughs) Well, gross and gross. Well, I mean, they're probably off somewhere. This was shot in Malibu, right? Yeah, but did they like collect them or did they breed them? I don't know if I want to (laughs) know. How do you collect roaches? Like, oh my gosh, if you you find a roach, let me know and I'll come capture it in my little capturing kit. Hell to pay with the library committee, Richard. Hell to pay. Oh, say hello to your father for me, Dad. Did you have a favorite part? I didn't, I I kept thinking the whole time, I'm like, wow, there's no favorite part. But it was at the very end when the exterminator guy was telling the sheriff about like, oh, it was super deep. It's like, you know, like shared consciousness and all this stuff. And like the sheriff is not getting it. So he shoots the radio to turn it off. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, that's so dramatic. That's so my style. I'm like, bang. That's after he like quits being the sheriff too, right? Yes, that is true. That is true. He does a lot of cop things after quitting being a cop. (laughs) What's What's that one quote? Um, Okay, so I've got a couple of things over my favorite scene. Um, Mm -hmm. I think sunglasses scene like takes it for me. It's just so weird and out there. Totally. But there's a scene where Richard the sheriff is confronting the woman from Intech, and he says, I wish you were a man. Since you're not, why are the roaches killing people and how do we stop them? And he holds his gun to her head. Yeah. So what would happen if she were a man? I guess he'd just punch her. I mean, he him. would do something not life threatening. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'd rather you punch me than put a gun to my head if yeah, I get no to shit. choose. 
I bet you the writer didn't necessarily uh, think of the implications of this, but that is disgusting. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that was a weird scene, but my favorite scene goes back to sunglasses. Sunglasses all the way down, Brittany. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Every answer goes to sunglasses, for sure. You're one mean piece of law enforcement, Sheriff. You bet I am. Uh, real quick, don't the nests kind of look like ball sacks a little bit? Yes, I was going to say that. And also, they look like they have the ooze from the second Ghostbusters movie. Like the weird purpley ooze. Tie in. Uh, okay, Brittany, there's one more thing we need to do. What's that? we got to read this user-generated review on IMDb. And i got to say, you haven't experienced this yet. Sometimes they go long, and i got to start cutting them down. Well, this one's a little weird, and maybe after I read it, you're like, don't do that one. <laughs> okay. Horror and comedy merge like cats and butter. This shocking tale of homosexual cockroaches invading a small town in France is a perfect example of what a good Spike Lee movie should be like. The next to last reason to watch this would have to be the famous person that edited it. The edits are MTV styled with a hint of sarcasm and pretension. More gore than one would expect from a walk-on role by Rick Landman. I don't think that's the right movie. <laughs> it is! Do we want to throw another, another one just for good measure to make sure you have something to use? <laughs> Let's do one more. <laughs> okay. This one is titled Good Movie. Ants don't scare me, and nor do spiders, but roaches are the one thing that freak me out. I think this movie had good special effects for 1988, and I thought it was a good cast of character actors. A good, <laughs> a good companion to this movie is The Bug, 1975, which has similar plot about killer roaches. Cool. Who wrote that one? Matthew 87. He got in early with those screen names. <laughs> All right, Brittany. Well, that was The Nest from 1988. A pretty great one. And I hope, oh man, I hope that uh, I'm never in a position where I ever have to face any roaches ever again. I hope for that too. For both of us and for yeah. all of our listeners. <laughs> hey, speaking of, if you're one of these listeners, thanks for being a donor. Um, you've done the best amount of things you can do to help out this show. And uh, we'll see you next week. Oh, hey, and this Wednesday is the uh, beginning of our new Child's Play series. Brittany and I will have some stuff up top, and then uh, go with the episode. Cool. Cool.